December's NSDA Public Forum Resolution is going to be Resolve the United States Should End Plan Colombia. Seems like a fairly good topic, a fairly balanced topic. It's not a perfectly even topic, but that's not inherently a bad thing under NSDA rules. I'll get to that in a moment. A lot of people are saying it's the first public forum topic we've had this year, and there's certainly reasons that that could be true. It's definitely a current events-themed, fairly narrow topic with clear ground for both sides and fairly intuitive positions. It's just not on something that seems to be of that much current events importance in a lot of U.S. news media, but that doesn't mean the topic isn't timely or that the clash on it doesn't have very real immediate implications for people elsewhere in the world. So let's start with the topic balance. Generally speaking, the pro side is going to seem to have an advantage in terms of literature, while the con side is going to seem to have an advantage in terms of framework. And by that I mean that there's been a lot more stuff written critical of playing Columbia recently than there has been supporting it. Very few people want to keep it exactly as is. Most people writing about it are writing about it because they have a problem with some aspect of it. And the argument saying, it is necessary, it is successful, are either based on goals that have already been achieved and therefore aren't a reason you need to keep the plan, or they are fairly outdated. So there's certainly more pro-authors, especially recently. At the same time, the con side gets to defend anything that isn't totally ending the plan, and if we prove that the plan should be reformed, if we prove the plan should be changed, if we prove that the plan has problems but should not be entirely ended, then that's probably still a con ballot. So the con frameworks are a little bit more intuitive. It's not asking on balance is playing Columbia as a whole good or bad. What the con team wants the debate to be is, is playing Columbia salvageable? And certainly there's a lot of ways that it can be taken there. So I want to talk about a little background before I talk about the arguments for each side. So Plan Colombia is the U.S.'s interlinked aid package with Colombia, of which the U.S. pays about 5%, Colombia pays around 95%. That was originally meant to be kind of like a Marshall Plan for Colombia, with a lot more infrastructure and a lot less military investment than ended up happening. It came into place in George W. Bush's first term, it was negotiated during Bill Clinton's second term. Obviously, it changed a lot post 9-11, as it got kind of adopted into a global anti-terrorism counter-narcotics strategy, and the conflation of infrastructure aid with development, with counter-terrorism, with counter-narcotics, all as one big policy is partly a function of U.S. strategy in the Middle East and Afghanistan, and partly a function of Alvaro Uribe, who was president of Colombia for most of the time that this was implemented, and who certainly was a major voice against the Colombian peace accord, and we'll come back to that later because it's a big part of this topic, helped shape it into that. So... Currently, there is a bilateral ceasefire in Colombia. Previously, there was a lot of conflict. The conflict started long before playing Colombia at around the midway point of the Cold War. Approximately 260,000 people have died in Colombia's armed conflicts since the 1960s. Plan Colombia was an attempt to stabilize this that was the first one made without Cold War baggage without the idea of we need to promote the capitalist side because they're capitalist, and more along the lines of what can we do that's actually going to help the United States and help Colombia and build democracy and give us credibility in the region and discredit Venezuela and Cuba in the region. And all of those combined make for a lot of different disparate goals, and playing Colombia does a lot of different things. Generally speaking, most sources will agree the most problematic part of it is the counter-narcotics component and the militarization pervading all other aspects of the plan. Generally speaking, 
people are generally much more positive about the funding for education, funding for vaccination, funding for land rights, so on and so forth. So, overall, what you're going to see is that playing Colombia has good and bad components that both sides can win fairly easily. They're not uncontestable, but generally speaking, both sides are going to win. There is some good and some bad, and then have to weigh from there. At that point, the pro's main argument across multiple contentions is going to be that the baggage of playing Colombia is toxic and unsalvageable, that we need a fresh start, that we need a clean break from there to establish credibility as an ally and to establish trust with the Colombian people, and that U.S. influence associated with Plan Colombia is going to poison the peace process going forward. It may have done some good things in the past, but any good it can do has been accomplished, and any bad it can do is ongoing, and any further attempts to do good would do better if they weren't associated with this bad. So we can have engagement with Colombia going forward. The process wants to make it clear the resolution isn't asking if we should end diplomatic relations with Colombia, if we should suspend all aid to Colombia, merely if we should end this plan and then do aid differently and separated from counter-narcotics, counter-insurgency, and military aid. The con side's main argument is going to be that we're in a precarious situation right now in Colombia. There is a peace process that is almost complete, but still in danger. It has been rejected once by the Colombian voters already. And that at this point, changing things up sends a signal that the U.S. is not consistent, cannot be trusted, is not actually invested in peace in Colombia. So when you look at those two ideas, the question becomes, should we save this is this worth saving? Would it be better to do some other kind of aid instead? And again, you can't really fee a plan or a counter plan, so the question becomes, what kind of aid would be done in the absence of Plan Colombia? And that's kind of a tricky question to answer. So generally speaking, you will have people advocating for these different things, but not saying which would be done. Similarly, there's also questions that are being established as to whether the upcoming administration is likely or unlikely to approve funding for the next phase of playing Colombia, but that's really not germane to the topic. Whether or not P Peace Colombia slash Playing Colombia 2.0 slash the infrastructure development parts of Playing Colombia go forward isn't really the question teams are asking. The question is whether it should be ended, not whether it will be funded or whether it will be ended. So the change in administrations doesn't really do too much to affect this topic, unless one side is arguing that if the plan is continued, the differences in the way that it will be continued are a reason to vote for one side or the other. So in that sense, it can fit in, but I don't think it's a topic that's really affected that much by the differences in administration. So let's talk about the peace process because that's kind of important. So there was a peace deal. The peace deal fell through. It was an incredibly close vote, 50.2% to 49.8%. Pretty much all polls suggested it was going to pass. Most people who voted no expected it to pass. Many people who campaigned against it were doing so with the intent of a protest vote, but still wanted a peace process to go through, and there was surprisingly low turnout on both sides. This might sound familiar to anybody who's looked at what's been happening in either the United Kingdom or the United States recently. How it affects here, though, is much like those previous examples, there's also a second attempt to go through this without going through a popular vote. There is an attempt to have it go just through the Senate, which looks like it is likely to pass. At that point, the question becomes, for the next 30 days, while we are debating this topic, is a change crucial or is a change going to shake things up? Keeping in mind that the resolution doesn't ask whether we should ever end it or whether we should ever change it or whether it should last forever, but the resolution is resolved in the present tense. So that can certainly be a portion of this. 
So the questions that you want to be asking yourself regarding the peace deal here. Did Plain Colombia cause the peace deal to fail? Did Plain Colombia make the vote for the peace deal possible in the first place? Even if Plain Colombia tanked the referendum, is Plain Colombia really necessary in a world where the majority of Colombians voted no? Generally speaking, when answering questions about the peace process, pros arguments are going to be that the peace process is a good thing, but that it is happening in spite of and not because of Plan Colombia, and that it would have happened years ago if it were not for the U.S. giving Colombia many military tools to use and disincentivizing them from using non-military tools to resolve this conflict. And that has happened despite U.S. meddling in Colombia. The con side's argument is that that's probably not true, but even if it were true, we are at a juncture right now where the plan that we have has created an opportunity for peace, and therefore we should not end it in the middle of the peace process, even if everything else Pro says is true. There's certainly a lot of good and bad things that have happened in Colombia over the past 15 years during the plan's tenure. The real questions are going to be, would the bad things have been better or worse without Plan Colombia? Would the good things have happened anyway without Plan Colombia? Would they have happened more? Would ending Plan Colombia in the past have been a good idea? And even if it were, does that mean that right now, ending it would still gain the same benefits? Or are we in a position where, whether or not it was a good idea in the first place, our best bet now is to stay the proverbial course? So that's where a lot of the clash is going to come in. Pro teams are going to talk about environmental destruction. Pro teams are going to talk about paramilitaries. Pro teams are going to talk about human rights violations. Con teams are going to talk about infrastructure. They're going to talk about education. They're going to talk about women's rights. Con teams are also going to most likely talk to at least some extent around economic development and trade agreements. There's a lot that both teams can talk about, and there's certainly viable arguments for both sides. If you have questions about specific arguments, put them here, we can talk about them. But overall, the pattern for all of these arguments is going to follow the same thing. Is it good or, it, or is it bad? If so, did it happen because of or despite the plan? If it happened because of or despite the plan, what would happen now if the plan were suddenly removed? Is there a way we could do this without? It's very likely in many rounds that the pro team and the con team are going to advocate kind of the same plan for Colombia going forward. It's just going to be a question of whether this new reformed or revised approach is better off if it is seen as having consistency in being a part of Plan Colombia, or if it will be better received and more helpful if it officially renounces Plan Colombia and comes as a clean start in relations. So anyhow, there's a lot that can go into this topic. How it develops over the next 24, sorry, how it develops over the next 34 days is going to be crucial. And overall, I think that rounds on it at the beginning are probably going to favor pro just because people are going to have an easier time finding pro cards. I don't think it's going to be a big change. I think that is going to narrow and maybe even reverse later on as people realize how to use con frameworks to answer pro arguments and find more con cards. Overall, the topic is balanced enough that picking second is probably the better option to go with. And I think that a con team that tries to directly refute everything pro says is at a disadvantage. Khan, however, is in a much better place to make strategic concessions on this topic than Pro is, and can certainly compete in that way. If you have other questions on it, leave them in the comments. I will try to answer them. Otherwise, best of luck at Princeton, George Mason, and anywhere else you may be debating this.